Hello Grade 12s and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to be looking at elastic versus inelastic collisions in the context of the momentum section. And I'm also going to be showing you some important teacher tips. You don't want to miss that out, it'll come later in the video. And I'll show you things like how students get marked in the exam on this type of question, where students go wrong, things to avoid, and how to get top marks in a question like this. If you've missed any other momentum and impulse videos, you can click the links in the description box below. Let's jump right in. Elastic versus inelastic collisions or interactions. So the first thing that you need to know is that when objects interact, when they collide, things like that, they can sometimes deform, which means they change shape, they twist, they can make a sound, they can give off light, they can heat up. And I think um, thinking of a car crash would be a, a very a nice example of this. They can contort, they can give sound, light, heat up, fire, and all of these things up here. All of these things has to do with an energy transformation, okay? So energy can be lost as heat or transformed into heat, light, all things like that. And what that means is that it can indicate that the kinetic energy of the system before the collision is not the same as after the collision. And when we speak about energy and in particular kinetic energy and how that compares before versus after, we speak about inelastic versus elastic. So we've got an elastic collision versus a inelastic collision. So a elastic collision that is a collision where the kinetic energy is conserved. And remember what we said about conserved. It means that the kinetic energy before the impact is the same as the kinetic energy after the impact. So you can see what I wrote there in brackets is the sum of the kinetic energy before is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy after. And you might be thinking, ma'am, what do you mean sum? Sum is adding. What are we adding? Remember, when we have an interaction between two objects, we have object A and object B, for example. Object A is a kinetic energy, object B has a kinetic energy. We add those two together, that would be the sum. And we do that before the collision, and then we do it again after the collision. If those before and after numbers are the same, the collision is elastic. If those two numbers are not the same, the collision is inelastic. So it says here, a collision in which kinetic energy is not conserved. The sum of EK before does not equal the sum of EK after. And the reason why this happens is total kinetic energy can change. It can decrease because energy is lost as heat, sound, or light. And what I want you to understand is that energy cannot be created. It cannot be destroyed. So what happens to the energy? It's not lost, it doesn't just disappear into nowhere, it gets transformed into other forms such as heat, sound, and light. So if they tell you in a question, hey, listen, this collision is elastic, so they tell you those words in the question, then we can write the following equation. The sum of the initial kinetic energy is equal to the sum of the final kinetic energy. And again, what do we mean by sum? Remember, this is pretending that we have car A and car B in our collision. So sum of initial kinetic energy. Now, actually, back up, hold on a second. How do we work our kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is equal to half times mass times velocity squared. It is so, so, so important to understand that before you can even understand this equation that I'm about to write here. Working out the kinetic energy, EK, or KE, EK, it's equal to half times mass of object times the square of the velocity of an object, okay? So what do we mean by elastic collisions? If they tell you the, the collision is elastic, we know that the sum of the initial kinetic energy is equal to the sum of the final kinetic energy because kinetic energy is conserved, which means it's the same. Now, when we say sum, we mean the initial kinetic energy of object A plus the initial kinetic energy of object B. So we've got initial kinetic energy of object A plus initial kinetic energy of object B equals the final kinetic energy of object A plus the final kinetic energy of object B. All these numbers mean, all these little letters mean something. So EK initial of object A. This would be EK 
final of object B. They're not just random letters, they mean something. Now let's expand that. How do I work out the initial kinetic energy of object A? Remember, we said kinetic energy is worked out using this formula. So initial kinetic, kinetic energy of object A would be half the mass of object A times the velocity initial of object A, but remember to square it, because when we're doing kinetic energy, we must square the velocity, plus half the mass of object B times the initial velocity of object B, and we square it. So grade 12s, this corresponds to this, okay? And this corresponds to this. We're expanding the formula. And we can do the final quickly. Just take note when I did the final that I'm using final velocity of A, final velocity of B. But please, and this is a massive teacher tip, this is where a lot of my students go wrong. They forget the squares. So VF squared and VF squared. And another teacher tip, another thing where my students go wrong is that they confuse the principle of conservation of linear momentum with inelastic versus elastic. We can only write this formula that I wrote over here, this exact one that I wrote over here, if they tell you the collision is elastic. If they don't tell you that, you cannot use this formula. However, remember, when we learned the principle of conservation of linear momentum, if the system is isolated, then we can go ahead and use this formula, okay? So we can use this formula, just like that, if we're working with an isolated system, which we will always in grade 12, but you cannot just go ahead and use this formula. This is different. This is if the collision is elastic. Just please be aware of the differences. Principle of conservation of linear momentum, there's no half, so you see it says half mv squared, there's no half, and there's no v squared, it's just m times v. They are different. I cannot emphasize that enough. So if they tell you the collision is elastic, we can use this formula above, and they could ask or require of you to solve for one of these variables, whether it's initial velocity of A or final velocity of A or whatever. But a, a more common question is they could ask you the following. Determine whether a collision is elastic or inelastic. Now, what's very important to note about this is they are asking is the collision elastic or inelastic? They're asking you to figure it out. They're not telling you that, that it is elastic. If they tell you it's elastic, you can go ahead and make the initial equal the final. You see, initial equal the final. We can make those two sides equal. That's if they tell you that it's elastic. However, if they ask you to determine if it is, so figure out if it is, you cannot make them equal. So in other words, if you do this over here, if they ask you to determine, you will get all your marks deducted. You will get zero for that entire question. So I wrote here, you cannot make initial kinetic energy equal the final kinetic energy because we don't know if it's elastic or inelastic. So how do you do this? What you will do for me is you will split your page down the middle. You see I've drawn a solid line here you will calculate the initial kinetic energy on one side. You will calculate the final kinetic energy on the other side. Then you will compare these two values. If you, for example, get 400 joules on this side and 400 joules on this side, if they are the same, then you can conclude that the collision is elastic because EK initial is equal to EK final. We have proved it. But if, for example, you get 400 joules on this side and 200 joules on this side, then you will conclude that the collision is inelastic because the initial kinetic energy is not equal to the final kinetic energy. So you need to split your calculation. You need to calculate the initial on one side and the final on another. And if you take a closer look at what I've done here, remember the initial kinetic energy, that will be the kinetic energy initial for object A plus the kinetic energy initial for object B. So you're using two separate objects. And this will be the same thing, but for final, this will be the kinetic energy final for object A plus the kinetic energy final for object B. Then you compare them at the end. And then you ask yourself that question at the bottom, 
If they are equal, yes, then it's elastic. If they are not equal, so if that does not equal that, then inelastic. So let's do an example. This is an example that we did in a previous video where we actually figured out car A's final velocity, but I've just written it in here for us. So we've got car A and car B. They are initially both traveling west. They Car A collides into the back of car B. And you can see here that they were initially traveling west, so 28 meters per second west, 16 meters per second west for car B. So there's the initial velocity of A and B. After the collision, car B moves west, so we've got 24 meters per second, and we worked out that car A also traveled at 16 meters per second west after the collision. They give you the masses, and I wrote there, determine if the collision is elastic or inelastic. Now remember, they are not telling me that the collision is elastic or inelastic. They want me to figure it out. So our first step is, well, I listed my variables. Then what I do is divide my page in half, so I did a little squiggly line. On the left-hand side, I'm going to do the sum, that symbol means sum, of initial kinetic energy, and on the right, I'm going to do the sum of the final kinetic energy. Remember, we're dealing with objects A and B. So initial kinetic energy, that would be half mass VI, remember this is object A, object A squared, plus half the mass of object B, VI squared. Remember, technically, and I, I, it's not necessary to write this down, but this is the initial kinetic energy of A. And this over here is the initial kinetic energy of B. So it's basically the two initial kinetic energies added together. We do the same on the right-hand side, but take note how I don't put an equal sign in the middle. Okay, so we're going to do over here, we're going to do the final kinetic energy of object A. And you can see that it's final kinetic energy of object A because I'm using final velocity plus the final kinetic energy of object B. So on the left, I've got initial kinetic energies of object A and B. On the right, I've got final kinetic energies of object A and B. Then we substitute in what I know. These are my variables. So I've got half. My mass is 600 for A. Initial velocity is 28 squared. My mass for B is 900. My initial velocity for B is 16. Remember to square it. If you don't square it, you're going to get the whole thing wrong. I'm going to do the same for the final. So my mass of A, A is 600. Final velocity of A is 16. Remember to square it. For B, I've got half. The mass is 900. My final velocity is, yeah, final velocity of B is 24. Remember to square it. You take your calculator. So I'm going to get rid of this now. I don't need that anymore. You take your calculator, you work out the sum of the initial kinetic energy, get an answer. Work out the sum of the final kinetic energy, get an answer. Remember, we are working with energy, so our unit is joules. Now, take a look at the initial kinetic energy and the final kinetic energy. Are they the same? So we go EK initial does not equal EK final or sum. Let's say the sum. We must say the sum. Therefore, if they do not equal, the collision is in elastic okay and that's because kinetic energy was lost kinetic energy was lost and remember what i told you grade 12s it's not lost and gone forever it's essentially transformed into other forms of energy such as heat and light so it's very important to note that so for the teacher tips please remember do not confuse the principle of conservation of linear momentum, which is where we make them equal because we know it's an isolated system and the total linear momentum is conserved, which means we can make it equal. It's mass times velocity plus mass times velocity. There's no half, there's no square velocity. When dealing with elastic versus inelastic, that's when you use this formula over here. We can only make them equal. So we can only pop an equal sign between them, like I have over here, if we know that the collision is elastic. If we don't know that it's elastic and we have to prove it, or if we have to determine, we have to split the page down the middle. It's very, 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 very important not to forget your squares. So on your masses, all these little squares over here, if you do, you're going to get the wrong answer. You can lose a lot of marks. Please make your conclusion nice and clear in the end. Please let me know what other videos you'd like to see. Remember to find more Momentum videos in the description box below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.